All right, hello guys, and I'm ready to present my February forecast now. It's the 29th of January, so we waited till the very last minute to upload this. Now, we're going to see a, a little bit of an increase in accuracy from the January forecast to the February forecast because we do have access to analogs now that the government shutdown has kind of been postponed, uh, and we have these three weeks to, I, I believe it's three weeks, to have access to analogs and such, so the ac accuracy should be dramatically improved here. Uh, during the January forecast, there was no analog, so we had to go based off of entirely models and kind of uh, just what was happening right there in that first week of January. So accuracy was kind of a struggle there. So let's get right into it. We're going to be looking at the CFS model to begin with. And I actually agree with the CFS model quite a bit here. And I think that happened last month too, where I, I actually agreed uh, quite well with the CFS model. And, and you can see there's a lot of precipitation there for the Southwest. Uh, first off, that's the biggest, biggest note there for the precipitation. East Coast, kind of average. Uh, and, and in Texas looking at a little bit of a below average as well as the Pacific Northwest. I, I like to mention the Great Lakes region and down through uh, the kind of Mississippi Valley area. That's where we're going to be looking at some slightly above average precipitation. And that looks to be kind of the snowstorm track again. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of snowstorms move through there, I think, since December, kind of that area, uh, the Missouri area, uh, it, through the Illinois, Indiana area. And I think we're going to see more of that this month, as well as into interior New England. Now, we're going to look at the CFS per, uh, temperature anomalies here and I hate to let people down the east coast does not look as good as I once thought it would for February and I'm just being realistic here uh, even though my winter forecast I've had to go against it many times here in the monthly forecast I'm perfectly willing to do that uh, to remain accurate here obviously from a seasonal forecast it's a little bit harder to do than a monthly forecast so the accuracy goes up as we get shorter range so my weekly forecasts are the most accurate or the snowstorm forecast obviously uh, the, the like you know daily forecasts uh, we're looking at this this temperature uh, anomaly here, and you can see in the west, it looks kind of above average. I'm not buying that quite as much here. They, the models have been showing that every month now, and it really doesn't end up panning out that way. Uh, we end up a lot closer to average for those areas. Now, the, the north central United States, I agree with this. At least through the first week or two of February, we're going to have very far below average temperatures for that area. And I think that's really going to influence the entire month. Even if it warms up a little bit towards the end, I think overall we're going to be looking at below average temperatures for that area. But I think it's pretty pretty possible that we will be looking at below average temperatures there for the entire month. Uh, so that would lead to far below average temperatures for those Dakotas, Minnesota, Iowa, Nebraska, Wisconsin, and portions of Mich Michigan, portions of Montana as well. Uh, areas like that are the most below average, I think. East Coast, I'm going with equal chances. Uh, southeast, I think, has the best chance for above average. So with the East Coast, I kind of disagree here. Uh, I think the North has equal chance or about average, uh, whereas the Southeast, where I'm from, just in case you thought I have a bias, um, where I'm from, I think we'll have above average temperatures. Now, we're going to be looking at your ECMWF EPS 2-meter temperature anomaly 7-day ensemble mean, which means this is going to be going weekly on the temperature anomalies based on an ensemble model which is the ECMWF model. Now, your, for your first week, again, those Dakotas, Minnesota, Iowa, Montana, we're looking at far below average temperatures in that green, whereas the southeast and south central United States, we're looking at above average temperatures. And you can notice the northeast is a little bit below average here for that first week. And then as we move on to the second week, you can see that we go a lot closer to average. And, and the southeast remains above average. This is really what's influencing me to think the southeast has the biggest chance of being above average here on the east coast. Again, where I'm from, just in case you thought I had a bias, I do like cold weather. I prefer cold weather. Uh, but we see that the Dakotas, Montana, and Minnesota, Iowa, Nebraska, they get even colder. Uh, the, the western United States, we get cold. Again, the models are very conflicted on this. The analogs would say we'd be closer to average. I think we'll be closer to average. Uh, as we move on to the third week, again, a lot of those areas stay the same. And same with the fourth week, except we kind of move a little bit further east with that cold there. Uh, but Iowa, Minnesota, the Dakota is really looking to get the heart of that. Now, here's my official temperature or er, precipitation forecast. You can see below, slightly below average precipitation there for Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. That looks to be the trend through the winter, really. Uh, looking back, California, Nevada, portions of Arizona, you're looking at above average precipitation. And then we have that little bit of above average precipitation from Missouri up through the Great Lakes region and also up through the interior northeast area. And again, that's also been a trend this winter as we look back. Uh, those areas look to remain the same. 
getting snowfall mostly for the interior northeast, I believe. And you can notice those two ECs, that means equal chances. That means we can go either way in those regions with no colored in shades. Now let's look at your temperature forecast. Again, ECs equal chances. West coast and northeast are equal chances. Uh, and really it's that north central United States. We looked back at the models. They are saying these areas will remain consistently cold over the weeks, especially the darker blues. Uh, and that's what's leading us to believe this will be far below average, as well as my analogs throughout the year 2014 to 2015, 2009 to 2010. Um, in 2003 to 2004, as well as all those late 70s winters that matched up with the sea surface temperatures. They all call for below average temperatures for these areas, far below average. Uh, so everything really matches up uh, for these areas to receive far below average temperatures. Now we're going to see slightly above average temperatures there for that southeastern region of the United States, Louisiana, through the rest of the Gulf states, Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina, and southern portions of Virginia, where I'm from. Again, uh, no bias. Anyway, guys, that's it for the forecast. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this forecast. Again, apologies for the January forecast uh, for you East or Eastern United States residents. Uh, that that was a bust. Uh, Western United States, it did it did far better than the East, uh, but it still wasn't perfectly accurate. Again, with the government shutdown, it is kind of a struggle. Uh, probably the more responsible thing to do would have been to have not made the forecast at all with the limited amount of information. Uh, I, and I do apologize about that. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoy your month of February, and I hope you also subscribe. Uh, and look forward to the March forecast, which will certainly be available unless there's a government shutdown again. Uh, hopefully there's not. Anyway, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Have a great month.